Hey, welcome to Standing in Faith. My name is Kat, and I'm in the studio with Jeff. Here I am. John. Good morning. Rochelle. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I was mixing it up. And David. Hey. Are I'm you really... having an identity crisis today? Well, you know, we did discuss truth? that in the beginning. I uh, thought I was truth. a unicorn, but now I don't know. <laughs> I know. I'm really excited about this episode because we're going to be talking about truth, and I love truth. Yes, uh, Romans 1. Let's start there. Verse number ni- verse 19. We know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to us. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and divine nature. So we have no excuse for not knowing God. If you exist... You exist. You have to know it. Even if you are blind, even if you're deaf and you can't see or hear, you know you exist. And if something is created, could it be what created itself? That's an oxymoron. We're in an, an age of reason. So is there the creator and the created things? I think, therefore I am. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because of something I did, I created myself. I exist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, there's a difference between eternal power and divine nature and then humanity. And our perception of things. So we often hear that uh, perception is reality, but uh, we can dive into that as deeply as we like. But uh, we know that uh, there is a truth. Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life which we can explore, and it's absolute, but perceptions are generally pretty relative and confusing and will take you down a rabbit hole in a heartbeat. So so let's kind of make this a little less obtuse. So when you say perceptions are relative, can you give us an example? Well, we could Google it and come up with the, uh, do you see the old lady or the young woman? Mm. You know, these uh, eye, eye tests, do you see a yep. white dress or a black dress? Yep. So there's there's a visual perception that is, is it deceptive? I don't know, because it's strictly perception. <clears throat> but then there are things that we... There are things that we can't not know. The book by that title, by J. Budzieszewski, that began to get into the realm of absolute truths. Okay, so so when you say perception is reality, so the way we look at things forms our experience. There's the word, experience. And what I think you're suggesting is that when I filter what I see through my experiences, I might not see the same thing you see. Abs- absolutely. So, for <laughs> instance, if, if there was an item that cost $50 and I have $10, Rochelle has $100, I might say that item is, too, is expensive. Rochelle might say, oh, that item's cheap. Mm-hmm. Based well, on our experience. So is the truth the item is expensive or the item is cheap? cheap? That is you know, relative. That's relative. Mm-hmm. That's perspective. Well, it's the same thing with uh, that whole analogy of the blind men, blind men, and a elephant, and each one of them is on part of the elephant, and they're describing what this elephant is based on what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. And you know, one, oh, this is a big tree trunk, and they're feeling the et cetera, et cetera, and each one of them has a different reality as to what the elephant actually is. And I think it's the same thing. When we have, when we use perception as opposed to what really is true, uh, it can be a whole lot different yeah. than what you see and what you see and what you see uh, as far as how you deal with it. It, it comes to, into worldview, too. I mean, you know, I was born in Africa, so my first view of of the world was a whole lot different than you guys who were born here and what you did. Um, 
and of course, I was born a little bit way before a few of you here in this room. So my whole perspective of back then would have been a whole lot different, you know, because we had nothing in the way of, uh, I mean, a radio was huge, big deal back then. Mm -hmm. And then when the transistor radio came out, wow, we had this on without a plug. You know, <laughs> we had batteries in it. Yeah, it was great. It carried mm -hmm. around. Um, so, yeah. So I've often heard the saying, seeing is believing. But what we just defined, that might not be the case. That's the flip. Mm -hmm. Believing is seeing can often be the case. I think of philosophy throughout all the ages, and we started thousands of years ago with Plato's cave and percept perception, you know, the shadows, if you're familiar with that story, that that person who was in a cave could only see what was in the cave, and that was the world. Mm -hmm. And the shadows that cast on the wall were their gods. They became gods to them. I can't understand it, but this thing does whatever I do. So it, it becomes something to be worshipped because you see something and you can't understand it and you want to deci decide what it is based on your experience and you define your worldview and your perspective and your beliefs and therefore now it's real, true. And I just think that we're in an age now where everyone says, you know, well, that's your truth. You know, you can have your truth and I can have my truth. And I always like to say, I think what you're saying is I can have my experience and you can have your experience, mm -hmm. but there really is truth and you can come to a point with people, if I take this phone and I let it go, we both know it's going to fall. So we can talk about the scientific method and ways of studying what is true. Um, I think the atheist friends of mine would say that faith is defined as belief without proof. Your faith is just a belief without proof. I would like to go back and say, before we set that as our foundation, as Christians, we get to actually know that God's word is true because of our beliefs, and then God has revealed his truth to be accurate. So it's very interesting to kind of come at somebody who's looking at the created thing and worshiping it versus looking at the creator and coming from that perspective, that experience. Mm -hmm. There's a choice that has to be made, as Romans talks about. You know, that's interesting because for me to have faith to, to believe— and to experience that, it becomes substance and reality. I mean, that's what no, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things unseen. And so while all these years that I have believed, I've also experienced what I believe, you know, in what you don't see, seeing the unseen. I have experienced that. And to me, that became part oh, of... Yeah my reality because not only did I believe in it, I actually experienced it. So it's both and. Yeah. I'm so, so I'm just sitting here thinking through the idea of what is truth. So, and, and we've said truth can be something that's personal. So if I believed a lie then that becomes my truth. You've agreed with it, mm -hmm. which gets into a lot of spiritual warfare and things because yep. to agree with something wrong is to agree and open it up to it. I think there's a lot of that right now, a lot of that running around, which is why I'm kind of bringing it up here <clears throat> is the idea here that, okay, so if I believed in David's example, I'm blind I'm touching this big, thick, rough thing, and I think it's a tree when, in fact, it's an elephant's leg. I believe that that is a tree, and then all of a sudden it moves. Mm -hmm. Now I believe that trees move, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know this is an, an extreme example of it, but now I can go around and I can bump into real trees and not know they're real. Because they didn't move. Must not be right? a tree. Until I find another elephant and then, oh, okay, here's a here's tree. A tree. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, in essence, what I've done is I've defined my experience or something that I believe based on something that's not true. Um, so. 
that begs the question then, and that is, who is to tell you you're wrong? Who has the authority? Who has the authority? Who has to the tell viewpoint? You you're wrong. Well, see, now you've introduced the idea of an authority. Yes, right? I have. And the idea of an authority can be lots of things. Well, right? but in this case, it would be someone who knew what an elephant was. Maybe. So someone who could see and could see the whole elephant. Mm-hmm. Right. Who and knew the understand difference the between elephant. elephants and, and reveal it to others that it <laughs> is an elephant. And reveal it to others. Right. Mm-hmm. But if everybody's blind, then everybody's going to have a different perception of this element because someone might be feeling the trunk and say, oh, no, 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 this isn't a tree. This is, I mean, that was the whole idea of that, that particular story. But, but yeah, but then you have the one that all of a sudden has, just like in the, the Plato's t- uh, cave, finally one comes out of that cave, bumps into a tree, feels it, and begins to see what is really real. You know, well, the guy gets his eyes open and says, oh, you guys are wrong. This is this is what this is. However, the one that's been feeling the trunk and like you said, is is he going to believe that? Well, maybe not. He's, he, he, he's going to listen to this guy and say, yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. That's I, I think it's still a, it's a tree, you know, because he's still blind. And there's a lot of comfort in being blind, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Because you know, you know what you know. Mm -hmm. And you get comforted knowing what you think is true is true. And if somebody comes against your truth and tells you it's not true, you're going to defend it if you've been comfortable with the truth that you know is true. (laughs) And this is where we find ourselves in Mm -hmm. 2022. Is anybody else's head about to explode? I was just going to say, we need to make this a lot simpler because we're talking in... In code. Here's I, what I. Yeah, yeah, let yeah, me yeah. let me say a couple of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the engineer in the room, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this podcast plays out. But here's something: there today, with critical race theory and all the other stuff that we're dealing with in our culture, there is this notion that. Uh, that um, scientific truth or that truth is or that logic is actually a mechanism to oppress white men invented to oppress others. And my basic response to that is, well, that's just hooey because we didn't make it up. We discovered it. And mm-hmm. and I, if you look at mathematics and just bear with me. We get down to the concept of if I have one apple and you give me another apple, I have two apples. And there's no way to prove that except it's what's known as axiomatic. It is what it is. By definition, we choose to define one, two. Counting is the is the basis of all mathematics. And we define that and we understand it to be truth because that's what it is. I believe because we are wired to recognize when we see Bingo. When we discover true truth, we know it. We're wired that way. And that's what you read at the beginning. Absolutely. There, I keep using that word. So you have to (laughs) some level, conscious or subconscious, reject truth. If it is true... You have to, at some level, choose to receive it and accept it and discover it, or you have to reject it, according to Scripture. Mm -hmm. So when my atheist friends or friends of other faith-based worldviews tell me my truth is just my truth, what do we do with that in terms of the power of what we hold in our Bible is the answer for all issues in this world. We know that. And we're still learning that as we walk with Jesus. But how do we tell, how do you show that to somebody when it's a journey? It's not a piece of cake that I can give you to eat. It's a journey that you have to desire the creator rather than the created thing. What do you guys think about that? I think that's an easy answer to me. It simply is 
once you say yes and accept the free gift of salvation and you start to all this starts to come alive for you you end up changed yeah period Mm -hmm. and especially for people who know you before Mm -hmm. and now see you now there's something different about you (laughs) i mean that that's something that people hear there's something different about you you're not responding the same way you used to. You're doing this thing different. You're doing that. You, right? You change. Yeah. You're how, no longer defining you... the elephant with the blindness. You're asking God, "What is this?" You're able True. to receive it. But that's how. That's the answer to. For me, you're right. It's it's a complex thing. But when it comes right down to it, you're different now. You're different, and I think the difference is you become whole. Mm-hmm. Not instantly 100% whole, but you start the journey of becoming whole. And as you start to become more and more whole, you're different. You're, your sight there's no is way that you can be the way that you were. Would you say your you're sight new. is different? You're your new. spiritual eyes are opened? I don't think it's just that. Of course. But I think in it's... terms of truth, finding truth, without receiving the power of the gospel, how can you see with spiritual eyes? You can't. That's right. You can't. You you're dead. Well, but yeah, you can. Through creation, there's, there's, there are a lot of people out there that have not received the truth and have spiritual eyes that can see things. Maybe not always the goodest things that they want to see. Can they see truth? What? Can they see truth without I, the Holy Spirit? I, I, this is a really interesting question. You went there, so I'm going to go there. So I just read an article about a Satanist. He had spiritual eyes. It wasn't the truth. But then all of a sudden, Jesus walks in the room. Hello. Delivers him from all of his addictions, all of his junk. Right? Now, all of a sudden, he starts. He's a different thing now. He's a new creation, actually, is what we'd call it from the Bible. But he's different now. So... He could see things that were unseen, but he wasn't seeing the truth. Right. Well, that no, I disagree. I mean, doesn't James tell us the demons believe in Jesus yeah. and tremble. shudder, mm-hmm. shudder, tremble? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, they're seeing truth. Right. And it, they are in agreement that and, Jesus is God. And there's lots of them like, hey, this isn't your time. What are you doing here? <laughs> right. right. Recognized who right. He was. So the demons, I mean, even people that don't want to deal with it or appreciate it or even acknowledge it can see it and know it. Right. So anyways, I'm not trying to start a debate, but what I am trying to get to is, so what, to your point, yes, I agree with you, Rochelle, that truth is something that we can accept or reject, right? Mm-hmm. Now, yes. when Agree it comes to disagree. what uh, me defining truth, I, I'm trying to go back and summarize here just because kind of, we talked about elephants and trees and it was confusing. And caves. And caves. So, And apples. If, if I were to try to summarize this, right, we can be deceived. Yeah. We can be deceived. By what we see with our eyes, right? We don't, we don't want to be deceived. So we do need an authority to help us or somebody that knows what is true to be able to point us. And right? we all, when we were children, learned how to speak the language we speak by people pointing to things and telling us what that is. And we've learned that that's what that is. So you, you do have this learning process. But what you want to do, and I guess what I'm trying to suggest we've been talking about is you you want to rely on what you see, but you also need to rely on with faith in what you can't see. It's what you know. Faith is being certain of yeah, what you, you know. It. It's the certainty of what you hope for. And you don't hope Evidence for things you already things. see. You don't hope for things you already have. But faith is being certain I am certain for what I hope for. So so I had said earlier, seeing is believing, right? I used to say that a lot. Um, but that, that makes me think of Thomas, right? So 
Um, Jesus has been resurrected. Right? He's risen from the dead. And Thomas is like, yeah, I'm not so sure. Even though all of his close inner circle, what, half of them by now have seen Jesus themselves, yeah. he still doesn't believe it. It's not possible. It right? can't be. In other How words. How is this possible? He, he, I don't think he said seeing is believing, but that's kind of the example that's popping to yeah, my unless mind. Unless I see and, and place that's my hand said. in his unless, side yep. and, and feel these scars, I'll, I'm not going to believe. He mm-hmm. needed an experience, yeah. a perspective. Yep. He wanted that more scientific method that we've been talking about, right? I, I want to touch it. I want to interact with it. I need to. Um, wh- wh- what's funny is then Jesus shows up, right, and says, come on now. Yeah. Right? Here you go. And it's interesting because it. I don't think I'm just going off a of memory here, but I don't think he did put his hand in it. I think all of a sudden he just like, oh, my gosh, it's he real. Knew. Right? He didn't need all of that scientific proof anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was interesting is what I think Jesus said afterwards. Again, this is just coming from my, my mind. I don't have the verses. Right. Is Jesus said, blessed are those who don't see but believe. Mm hmm. Faith. Which was which was really an interesting thing to say, honestly, if you really stopped and meditated on that. Um, essentially, Jesus prophetically blessed everyone sitting at this table mm-hmm. and everyone listening to our voice. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. I love that. Anyhow, I'm... That's beautiful. It seemed like I shut the conversation down. So let me get back to, are, are there still some lot. aspects of truth we haven't well, talked about yet? Well, gee, we've only been talking for half an hour or so, and, <laughs> and philosophers have been discussing this for 5,000 years. Um, two, two quick things. Uh, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Say and, it plainly, uh, he says. Hmm? Remember, he said, say it plainly. Well, I just know that, okay. What is truth? What is truth? But he he didn't, my understanding is that uh, he was suggesting that there was no such thing as truth, actually. And uh, again, from a philosophical point of view, now this one will twist your head, but we know that there is such a thing as absolute truth, logically. And how do we know that? Ask yourself the question or make the statement, there is no such thing as absolute truth. You just made an absolute. I'm going to say it again. There is no such thing as absolute truth. Absolutely. Uh, Except for that statement. Is that (laughs) true? Absolutely. That's called the uh, law of (laughs) non-contradiction. And it in itself proves that there is this nebulous, far-out, philosophical thing as truth. And I think on that, on that, and I think that the Lord gave us that as part of our wiring to discover that. And on that little sure pinhead, then we be, can begin to pursue the truth of the universe, the of our cosmos, mm-hmm. of God's sovereignty, of his character, I like of how, his story for us. I like how in Acts 17, when Paul is talking to the people at Athens, and he's describing like just kind of all this like fumbling about that mankind has History. been doing, and we're just like, you know, people who don't have like, you know, that weren't Hebrew that had, you know, God r- revealing himself through the prophets and stuff. and um, And he's like, okay, look, in the past, God overlooked all this ignorance. But now he commands everyone to repent. So now repent says, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. And he's given proof that this person is worthy to be the judge. He gave proof by raising him from the dead. So it's like, okay, all this fumbling about, now it's time to repent from that. Because the gospel really is a command and so you have to decide, will I obey the command to believe or disobey? Hmm. 
There's so much in that obey and disobey that to me here's, I hear more agree or disagree. I either going to agree with the creator of the universe or am I going to worship the thing that has eyes but cannot see? Myself, my thoughts, you know, am I going to worship the creator who, who made the whole stars, the heavens, the universe, the planets, the water, the ocean, the animals, or am I going to look to a thing that man has carved and say, this is, this is truth, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank, whatever the thing that man has decided is worthy of absolute truth. Am I going to look to that? Or am I going to look to the one who created those things, <laughs> those thoughts that way? It's, yeah, it, it, you know, you, you're talking about idols and stuff, but it, and, and it's so true because what happens is we we create our own gods basically when it comes. You're gonna to, worship something. You're gonna mm-hmm. worship something. Yeah, you're Yourself. made to worship. Mm-hmm. I mean, even an atheist worships something. Worships his mind. Worships whatever it may be. I mean, I've always said it takes a lot more faith to be an atheist than it does to, you know, be a believer in Jesus. But, mm-hmm. um. So if you think about the fact that um, what what you would, what Rochelle was saying is the interesting thing about idolatry, and this was a, a quote Sheila actually showed it to me last night was was that uh, with all the idols that are out there, as soon as man gets rid of one, there's always another one that takes its place, mm-hmm. which is so true. If not substance idols idols of the heart and it's something i think we even as believers always wrestle with too um especially when it comes to god and and our perception of god what is the true perception of god you know even through the scriptures because people grow up in a hellfire damnation situation church where that's all they heard and so they think that that's what god is and of course it's not true he's not a uh, he's he's not this raging wrathful, you know. They they lose the idea of the character of God, but I think that what happens often too is we want to create a God that fits our box, that fix fits our world, and 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 if we do that, then if something goes askew with that, we can we can rearrange our God so it fits that scenario. You know, and it, that, that makes things easier for us to, to answer questions or to do whatever, rather than really looking into the beautiful mystery of the creator, the mystery of God, mm-hmm. and the mysteries that he, many in many ways, he allows us to look into, but not always discover everything. Yeah. Take Job. You know, he left it as a mystery. Even Daniel he was so wise, and he, he got all these things revealed. He had all these visions. He had visions explained, and but then he still had some questions. And at the end of the of his book, he's like, well, wait, I don't understand this or that. And it's like, no, no, Daniel, go your way. You know, but I, I faithfully served you. I, you know, That's not what he said in the book, but I'm just thinking of what you might think. Like, but, I'll, but I've been so faithful. Nope, go your way. It's sealed up until the time of the end. Go your way. Like, you're not going to know. You're not going to know everything. Well... The book of Revelation is the same way. Somebody who thinks he's got it nailed down. Well, what about that one passage in Jer- there when God shows John the seven thunders? And then he said, oh, by the way, John, wrap that up. That's yeah, for another seal time. Seal it up. Yeah, even that. So seal there's it, a key seal missing. Mm-hmm. Even yeah. in the garden, you know, they were only allowed to know so much. And mm-hmm. there, there wasn't a rule, thou shalt not eat, although that's how people interpret it. It was, if you do this, you will die. It, this is the consequence of idolatry. This is the consequence of choosing your way over my way. Mm -hmm. I have a way of which I want to love and reveal myself to you. And they chose to do it the way they wanted it done Mm -hmm. instead of trusting him. And there's that word trust again Mm -hmm. and that experience of trusting God, a.k.a. trust and truth, right? They go together. Hmm. So we've been going for a half hour and we haven't even kind of touched on this. I'm going to kind of touch on this. So. We're kind of in a phase of, is the Bible true? So we figured we better start with defining what truth is, or at least trying to. <laughs> I, hopefully we haven't left all the listeners completely confused by elephant trunks and <laughs> trees and Play, absolutes. Plato's and, cave. Uh, Apples. Yep. But there's some challenges that we want to hit on. 
right? The first is, is the Bible full of contradictions? Question mark. Um, so we're going to talk through that in a future episode. So let's bless the listeners. and well, They need to be blessed. After, after this. this one, yeah. <laughs> Especially with the whole identity Journey confusion at oh, the beginning. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I bless the listeners in Jesus' name with truth. In knowing truth, in knowing what is absolute and what is not, in knowing the truth of their identities and mm. exactly who they are. I bless everyone listening with understanding from the Holy Spirit that's going to bring enlightenment and understanding and knowledge and truth to each and every one of us in Jesus' name.